This man has a professional interest in Forrestal. Commander Bob Stanley is a leading US Navy investigator. He is well placed to judge the historical impact of this disaster. Forrestal fire was a watershed event, if you will, in the terms of the amount of damage done for an accident in naval aviation history. The US Navy's investigation of the Forrestal disaster is also considered a watershed. For investigators like Stanley, it's the benchmark for their profession. Stanley uses his credentials to gain access to the USS Forrestal's official investigation document. Under federal law, filming the contents of the report is forbidden. But Stanley has agreed to reopen the file so that we can learn how the original Navy investigators cracked the case. The man who carried out the Forrestal investigation was Rear Admiral Forsyth Massey. Massey is now dead. But back in 1967, the respected officer put his reputation on the line by vowing to get to the bottom of the Forrestal disaster. Stanley recognizes that Massey faced a tough challenge. Many witnesses are dead. Fire has destroyed much of the crucial evidence. More lies at the bottom of the ocean. Without the physical evidence, it's a huge obstacle for any investigation to determine what really happened. Massey must find out if the Forrestal fire was a freak accident or if it could happen again. The US Navy commands 17 active aircraft carriers equipped with hundreds of planes and thousands of crew. The report reveals that Massey's first step is to interview hundreds of eyewitnesses. Question one is what caused the fire in the first place. Frankly, Admiral, uh, I had assumed that we had been attacked. Many believe they'd come under enemy fire. Well, sir, the uh, second explosion was more violent than the first. They report seeing missiles strike the ship and bombs exploding on deck. Massey has one definite way to find out. The radar. Forrestal is equipped with one of the most sophisticated radar in the world. It has a range of 322 kilometers and can detect aircraft 15,000 meters above. But on reviewing the ship's logbook from July 29th, Massey discovers that the radar detected nothing. With hostile fire ruled out, Massey starts to look for answers closer to home. His most important piece of evidence is footage shot by the onboard camera. Massey orders copies of the footage. He hopes this will reveal all. Just before the fire started, the cameraman recorded two planes taking off. Then, as he stands by to film the next takeoff, something catches the operator's attention. Quickly, he pans left and captures the fire as it takes hold on the rear deck. Although black and white and grainy, and suffering from electronic interference from the ship's powerful radar, the film is forensic in its detail. Massey analyzes it shot by shot. With an investigator's eye for detail, Massey discovers a clue hidden in the footage, a clue that will be the key to understanding how 134 crew members of USS Forrestal lost their lives. There, a clearly discernible flash beneath the plane about to take off. This fighter jet is on the runway towards the front of the carrier. But the actions of the men in the foreground don't match up with what appears to be happening right in front of them. One of them turns and points, not towards the flash, but instead in the opposite direction, to the rear of the ship. Massey is confused. The men don't react to the flash directly in front of them. Why not? He goes back to his interviews with the deck crew. They confirm that they did see a flash, but they saw it near the Phantoms on the starboard rear of the ship, the opposite end of the deck to the flash Massey has spotted. 
this isn't making sense. Then something catches his eye. He suddenly realizes he's been looking in the wrong place. The answer isn't in the footage, it's in the Platt camera that filmed it. He discovers that the Platt camera is surrounded by clear plexiglass here on the part of the ship known as the island. The plexiglass is in front of the camera lens to protect it from dirt and debris. Massey develops a new theory that this flash is actually a reflection. He believes that because the camera was filming through curved plexiglass, it captured a reflection of a flash that took place somewhere else on the ship. If his theory is correct, this flash is a reflection of the start of the entire incident. Could this clue unlock the whole mystery? To find out, Massey arranges an optical test. He arms a team of men with flash guns. He gets behind the Platt camera and studies the reflections of the flashes in the plexiglass. At last, one flash perfectly replicates the original flash caught in the plexiglass seconds before the fire started. This helps him locate the exact spot where the flash happened. Now, by analyzing detailed deck plans based on the Platt camera footage, and by applying basic geometry, Massey comes up with his theory as to what triggered the disaster. He reasons that the flash must have come from the Phantom at the very end of rear starboard deck. That plane is Phantom 110, it's Jim Bangert's fighter. Somehow, according to Massey's theory, Phantom 110 launched a rocket which struck Skyhawk plane 405 directly opposite. But this raises more questions than it answers. How could a rocket, a two-meter Zuni, fire across the deck and cause such devastation? Each Phantom has a built-in safety mechanism to stop just that. Highly trained air crews follow detailed safety procedures. So what went wrong? Was it human error, an electrical failure, or even a breakdown in the forestal safety procedures? With many other Phantoms in service, are more disasters lying in store for the US Navy? Massey needs to check out the safety mechanisms on Bangert's Phantom to find out why they failed. But Bangert's jet is at the bottom of the ocean. So Massey tracks down another Phantom. Massey now makes a discovery. The safety pins are anything but safe. When they are in position, the safety pins act as a circuit breaker. But Massey finds out that high winds on deck can pull on the pin's ribbons, ripping them out of the holes. The crew have even found some lying on deck. And Massey's investigation establishes there was a high wind on the day of the fire. Massey believes that on the day of the disaster, the safety pin had been blown out of its position in the launch pod. But there was a backup safety mechanism the pigtail. It's only when the pigtail is plugged in that a rocket can be fired. That's why the crew are ordered to plug them in just seconds before takeoff. But in interviews with the men, Massey discovers exactly why a Zuni rocket went off.